I want to deal with a topic entitled, Always Rejoice. Always Rejoice. All right, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 16 says this. It says two words. Rejoice always. Rejoice always. Now what does that mean? How can I rejoice always? How on earth can I rejoice in the midst of a battle or where things are going wrong? I want to tell you right now, it takes energy. It takes a commitment. It takes a dedication from yourself to say, I'm not going to let this situation or this issue derail me. I'm not going to allow the devil to lie to me. I'm not going to allow these things to sit down and mess with me. But in the name of Jesus Christ, I am going to stand strong. I'm going to see the power of God move. And I am going to rejoice. I'm going to rejoice at all costs. I'm not going to allow the devil the, the dignity or the advantage to sit down and say that he is winning over this thing. I want to tell you, we've had to rejoice in the hardest times. And let me say, it's not easy. All right, it is not easy. It's not like you wake up and you say, oh God, thank you for this trouble. No, it is a decision that you make, that you stand up and say, in the name of Jesus Christ, I make a decision right now. My soul, you will rejoice in this situation. My physical emotions will be toned down. I make a conscious decision to celebrate and to rejoice in the name of Jesus Christ. And as we do that, the power of God starts shifting in our own lives. Things shift in your heart. Things shift in your situation. And all of a sudden, you have faith to stand again. I want to tell you, when we start rejoicing, that starts bringing a peace in our situation. And remember this, the joy of the Lord is my strength. It is the thing that carries me. And when I start rejoicing, I start saying, God, I rejoice in this situation. I don't rejoice for the situation. This is a very big key. I rejoice in the midst of a trial or a problem. I don't rejoice and thank God for the problem. All right? I never thank God for issues and trouble. It's not God, it's the devil. The devil comes to steal. So he comes to steal your peace. He comes to steal your finance. He comes to steal your relationship. He comes to steal your prosperity in the sense of moving forward in any area. I want to tell you right now, the devil's the orchestrator of anything negative. But what happens is this is when things come, the Bible says issues are going to come. And when they do come, what do we do? We rejoice in the midst of it. We rejoice in the midst of the storm. You see what happened with Peter and them when they were bound up? They prayed, rejoiced, and praised God in the midst of a prison. Now, I want to just make this clear. We read the story, but we don't realize there was no outcome of that prison. All right, there was nothing like they were sentenced to a day or two days. They were sentenced for life. They forget about the Christians. They hated the Christians. So they didn't care if they stayed there. It was not like what's fair is fair. It was a case of you get locked up, you stay there, goodbye. I want to say right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that there is a shift, there is a change in the Christian speech, in the Christian's attitude. I want to tell you right now, if Peter and Paul and these guys could celebrate in the midst of crisis, we can do in Jesus' name. Amen. And so I had to learn that. I had to rejoice in the worst times ever. And I had to say, God, I make a decision. I'm going to celebrate. I'm going to rejoice. I'm going to praise you. I'm not going to quit. I want to tell you right now, we went through the battle. We got through the battle. We got restored. And guess what? My family still loved the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I want to make a statement that is radical. My family still love people. All right? People that had hurt us. People that had dropped us. People that had literally tried to destroy us. Our family still love people. That did not change. I want to say this today. When you rejoice in the midst of it, it says rejoice always. Good, we rejoice. Bad, we rejoice. In the worst of worst, we rejoice. 
Because God is in control. And when we rejoice, we're stirring ourselves up. We are releasing the power of God inside of us. And the Holy Spirit comes. And out of the Holy Spirit's fruit, Galatians 5.22, you'll read the second thing. Love, joy. And the Bible says that joy is your strength. It's that joy that carries you in the midst of this battle in Jesus' name. Amen. So on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and broke it. He said, this is my body that was broken for you. Take in remembrance of me. He took the cup and he said, this is my blood that was shed for you. Take in remembrance of me. The body of Christ was broken for our physical and emotional healing. The blood of Christ was shed for our salvation, protection and provision. And so this morning, I want you to be anxious for nothing. But I want you to rejoice in everything. Rejoice in everything in Jesus name. Lord, I thank you right now that you forgive us of any wrongdoing, any wrong thought, action, motive, intention. And Lord, I pray right now that we stand righteous and holy before you. God, I ask you right now to help us to get a revelation. Lord, that we will rejoice always. Lord, that no matter what the situation is, whether it's good, bad, medium, God, indifferent, we will rejoice. We will praise the Lord. We will celebrate. And Father, I thank you that the anointing of God will break every yoke of bondage over our lives. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. All right, folks. As we take of this communion, let's ask God to stir us up. Father, I pray right now that we will be stirred up as the body of Christ. Lord, that we will genuinely be able to rejoice always. In Jesus' name. Father, I pray for your power. I pray for the absolute a saturation of your power as we take of this communion this morning in jesus name and everybody said amen and amen let's partake lord right now in the name of jesus i release the power of god i release the dunamis power of god over our physical bodies I command any form of sickness to go in Jesus' name. Lord, I release the anointing of God upon us. And I thank you, Lord, the Spirit of God that dwells inside of us, quicken our mortal bodies. And we are healed. I declare us healed. We walk in divine health this morning. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. All right, folks. It's a wonderful Saturday morning. I trust that you are excited and that you are having fun and that you are going to go and spend some time with friends and family. And for those uh, uh, people, I can't even say money anymore. It's now the ladies are even worse than the guys. If you're into your sport, just enjoy whatever today brings. I want to pray over families right now. Lord, I pray over families. I pray over each and every family in Jesus' name. Lord, I release your blessing and anointing over our families. Father, I thank you that you will bring rest and peace over our families and over each and every one today. Lord, that there will be a genuine peace and blessing that comes upon each and every one. And Lord, that we're going to have a wonderful weekend and that the power of God will be seen and made manifest in everything that we do. In Jesus' mighty name, Lord, I declare blessing over families in the name of Jesus. <coughs> amen and amen. All right. Let's do our declaration this morning. In Jesus' name, I declare by faith that I walk in divine favor. I have preferential treatment. I have supernatural increase. I have restoration. I have increased assets. I have great victories. I have recognition. I have prominence. I have petitions granted. I have policies and rules changed. I have battles won that I did not have to fight. All because of the blessing and the favor of God in my life.